Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about getting shit. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, question, I have a senior programmer who gives me a ton of shit at work because I'm slow to pick up new patterns and we have tough times pair programming together. But I love my job and I love development. What do I do? So first question, why are you pair programming with the person who resents you? That's just like it's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And this is like this is the first thing I always this is what I love this conversation when I have uh, when I talk to a mid-level uh, idealist developer, a philosopher, developer, or a, a semi-inexperienced manager who has like no understanding. Like they've they've read too many books and never actually met people, or, and never been in, out in the real world. And they say the pair programming and mob coding, that's the way to do it, it's the way forward, it's the future, etc, etc. And I go, all it takes is for there to be the slightest bit of tension or personality differences or anything like that for these exercises to be completely pointless. And they will, of course, say, no, but, yeah, but you have to have these things in place. And I go, yeah, that's great. So in other words, what you're saying is that pair programming, mob coding, and all this stuff, it only works if everybody loves each other at work. Because that's basically what it means. Well, you don't have to love each other, but you have to feel comfortable sitting there and talking and especially when you do it like i've never met a software developer who's ever said anything besides when it comes to pair programming mob coding after eight hours i was completely exhausted yes because it is fucking exhausting to sit next to another person and have this co this constant back and forth and that is why i argue that pair programming mob programming and so forth there are circumstances where this is very useful but it shouldn't be a rule it should never be the default that's the dumbest thing in the world so uh, basically that's my first question why are you doing this if you don't get along you're just gonna get in, in each other's way you're not gonna produce anything meaningful and the tension between you might is very likely to just continue it's highly likely that it's, you, you, you're just you're you're suffering and you're causing pain for each other for no for no benefit. Basically, it's probably even damaging your productivity. So, my first suggestion would be if you are being mistreated by your manager, then you need to talk, or sorry, not uh, by your manager, but by this coworker. You need to talk to your manager. That's the first thing. So. Now I'm going to give you a tip that is very important, so listen up. When you work in a professional environment, you have to understand, and this hopefully is obvious to the older viewers I might have, but it might not be so obvious to the 20-somethings, or like if this is your first job. When you give personal criticism, because that is basically what you're going to do. You're going to criticize one of your coworkers. You have to understand that regardless of how you feel, regardless of how wrong they are and how right you are, it is vital that you communicate in a very non-aggressive way. Because if you get this wrong, if you communicate an issue in an incorrect manner, you deal with the situation poorly, you might be the person who actually gets in the hot seat. That's why it's extremely important that you know how to choose your words when you present criticism. Now, there are a few ways to do this. There is one way that is extremely popular and I would say it's my favorite one as well. It's like, I'm not saying it's a Swedish thing because I don't think it's a Swedish thing, but this is how I don't think I've ever, it's almost always, at least within, within this country, 
when somebody's going to do something, they usually do it this way. I think it's probably a management thing. Start every sentence when you try to describe the situation with your um, to your manager this way. I feel that blank or this person is doing blank this thing, uh, and it makes me feel blank this way. I feel statements and always making it about a feeling that you are getting is among the most non-aggressive things that you can communicate. It is really important also that you think about like your, no sarcasm, no nothing, like no, you, you don't even have this conversation with your manager if you can't do it without any anger. You cannot in any way for any reason communicate uh, give away that you have like resentments or there's tension or, or all this stuff you have to basically go about this as someone who is i'm not saying broken down but a victim in an essence you uh, and it's not about you blaming the other person for this it is about you communicating how you feel and then saying that i wish we can find we could find a way to solve this problem that is what you're looking for because what you want to very clearly communicate is that you feel that someone is doing something towards you that is not pleasant that affects your happiness at work but that you are also open to solve the issue if you fail to do this you might get fired and I'm not joking if they, f if your manager feels, uh, sees that there is an issue, or like the, if this gets to your manager that there is an issue, and you are perceived as being someone who is uncooperative or something like that, you might get the boot. I promise you, I've seen it happen, and you can even if you try to be the most forthcoming person in the world, you have your manager might be a real, a real fucking idiot, and make it <laughs> and, and see you as the problem. So that's why this is so dangerous. It's if you want to be really scared of trying to bring something to your manager, manager like this, try being a woman, uh, uh, talking about like a man or vice versa. Like if it's a gender thing as well, oh, then you really have to do the I feel thing. So uh, start every every uh, open always with the I feel uh, approach, uh, and never ever no sarcasm, no nothing, just present in a very non-aggressive way how you feel and ask how we how you can help fix this if your manager can't help you or won't help you because of reasons then you can also try to distance yourself from this person uh, you I mean if you never talk to each other and you don't need each other for doing your to do your work then there's no problem because then you don't practically exist for each other. If you do have to communicate, it's very good to learn what I call the rules of engagement. Basically, you learn how to communicate with this other person to minimize tension and friction and so forth. And that's like the best you can do. Because then at least you're never getting, you, you don't have to get into a confrontation with them over every little thing. And lastly, you can switch jobs. These are usually the things that you you can actually you can do to solve such a, this sort of situation. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you are getting a lot of shit and you feel like you're being mistreated at work by a, one of your coworkers, you have to bring it to your manager. And I urge you once again, everything should be a I feel a statement when you present this because it is very important that you don't come off as someone who is a trouble starter or that you have resentments, even if you do, like you, it doesn't really matter. It is very important that your manager, just as if you were to talk to the police, that they see that your manager sees you as the victim that is trying to solve the situation. Because what's going to happen then is that they are going to talk to this other employee, most likely, if it com comes to that, and try to find a way to resolve the situation. And if that other employee is not receptive 
to fixing this issue, they are the one in the hot seat. So this is the whole this is the whole issue. Because remember, there's always two sides to every story, and your manager isn't you. And they're going to try to figure out who, what, what can we do here? Who is the problem? And if you are the one who is being viewed as the problem, it's your ass in the hot seat. So make sure non-aggressive communication. I feel statements are among the best ways to do this, and no cr no cr aggressiveness whatsoever be solution oriented and then finally try to distance yourself if that's not going if you can't get the, your manager to do something or quit these are your options have a great day